Hi, I'm Johannes Brotrager. I'm a full stack developer at Durchblicker, and today I want to tell you something about our journey to raising our infrastructure configuration to the next level using Terraform. So, what does that mean? Of course, I do not want to give you a full course on Terraform. After all, uh, we don't have enough time for this in this format. But I do want to tell you a few small tricks and architecture patterns that we uh, learned in our journey to creating our infrastructure with Terraform that might be helpful to you if you are about to embark on this journey on your own. So, uh, who, who or what is Durchblicker? For those of you who haven't yet heard of us, um, we are the largest comparison website in Austria. We compare everything that you would need a contract for, so insurances, energy, banking, um, basically everything you could ever need. Um, we do about 15,000 comparisons per day for our users or our users on our website, so to speak. Um, and we uh, evolved from a startup to a scaled up to an established company. Of course, uh, within uh, this uh, process, our infrastructure needs changed. And we had to add new servers to deal with the growing uh, needs to infrastructure. Uh, and Nowadays, we are an established company and need to manage our servers in a more professional and more reliable way than just starting up servers wherever we want to and um, kind of um, formalize our infrastructure setup. Um, and of course, we are hiring. <laughs> I've been told to mention this, so I'm going to mention it. <laughs> um, so, what was our initial situation? What were our initial problems that we that we are about to tackle? So we had, a, as I already told you before, we had a very scattered server infrastructure. We had a mix of different clouds. So, really, I mean, every cloud you could imagine. We were in AWS, GCP, uh, DigitalOcean, uh, Azure, Hetzner. We had a bare bones server in our in our company building. Um, everything you could imagine. So, of course, this, uh, you can imagine this gets a bit messy. Um, but as it's to happen, um, but I think many scale ups are in a similar situation because, um, yeah, you add servers here, you add a servers there, and, um, it so happens that, uh, the configuration gets messy. So, uh, some of our infrastructure and most of our configs were managed by Ansible, which is another, uh, orchestration, orchestration program. But it's a rather procedural approach, so um, not that declarative, but more uh, in a executing scripts on an SS via SSH kind of way. Um, another problem we had was that our testing environments were not consistently configured, so you ha never had a real uh, true. Uh, you could never really be, be sure about. Uh, what was happening on the test systems because uh, you could just really nearly go in, change the configuration, change the setup of the servers, and uh, the next person who would use the would go on to use the test system uh, was our luck because the configuration changed unexpectedly. And yeah, um, another very big problem we faced was keeping our servers up to date. So um, with this amount of uh, thrown about servers, we always had to make sure that our uh, operating systems are up to date, that all installed packages are up to date, we don't miss any critical security updates, which of course added a lot of work and a lot of infrastructure overhead to our team. So, what was our path to a solution? We First of all, we harmonized the cloud providers, uh, we switched uh, mainly to GCP, uh, and we used managed container environments. And last but not least, and this is the big one that I want to talk about today, um, we use infrastructure as code with Terraform. Uh, so, what is this Terraform you talk about, you may ask? Um, infrastructure, uh, Terraform in its core is uh, infrastructure as code tool. This means that our actual infrastructure is defined in text files, um, which we can check in in a version control system. This means we always have a representation of our current infrastructure, uh, which can be checked out and uh, changed and then applied. So, if I want to change the infrastructure, I can just uh, change our infrastructure. I can just check out the repository to get all the up-to-date data of our infrastructure. 
And then I have the files where every single server or cloud function or whatever is defined. And I can just change the parameters as I want to have the infrastructure configured and apply the changes and Terraform will manage everything for me. So I just uh, go Terraform apply and the, the whole uh, infrastructure is set up. So a new cloud function is deployed with, uh, for example, more um, more memory or with or a cloud run instance with more cores or whatever. Um, uh, another big plus uh, to Terraform is that it's open source, so it's uh, free to use in its uh, in its basic form, um, and it supports all major cloud providers. So you can actually, uh, in a good way, implement multi-cloud infrastructure if you so happen to desire the uh, reliability that may come with this. Um, what I forgot to mention is, uh, it's also, as I said, for a declarative approach. So you have just, you describe, uh, what you want to have instead of how you get to there. So it's not a bunch of scripts. So first set up, then execute this script. It's just, okay, I want an, uh, a cloud run instance. It has to have, uh, 500 gigs, uh, M M bits, uh, megabytes of memory, and it has to have three cores and it may scale up to 10 parallel instances. Um, yeah. So now I've told you all of that. Uh, I bet you're burning to see some of that sweet declarative code. But first, uh, one caveat. As I told you before, this will not be a complete course on Terraform. Um, first, I will give you a tiny, tiny introduction. So just a, a, a little bit of, of basic code. And then I will show you some of the uh, architecture patterns and lessons learned for, from us. So here we have a basic Terraform Hello World example, prou proudly stolen and adapted from the document docu uh, from the documentation. Um, so what we see here is the definition for a cloud run service. Um, first we have the keyword resource, then we have the type of resource, Google Cloud Run Service and then the Terraform name, which is default. Um, so this is the Terraform name by which we address it within Terraform code. So when we want to reference this, uh, this Cloud Run service uh, on another location, we use the default. Uh, then the name, which is the name that is uh, uh, that the service will get in, in the GCP and the location. So this could also be wherever, North America. Yeah, you know the zones. Um, then we pass, we pass the template to our, to our service where we define which container should the service use. So a cloud run service, uh, just as basically, um, a Docker container, which can be spun up and, uh, scaled, uh, whichever way you like. So we use the, here, the, uh, cloud run hello container. So just a basic hello world container. And we give him the limits of one CPU and 512 megabytes of memory. So this is uh, what will be, and also we route 100% of the traffic to, to the instance. So if I were to um, configure my Terraform correctly and uh, have this in a, in a TF file and just hit Terraform apply, this would spin up a Cloud Run service using this container image um, and configure it for me. So this is, um, for me, this is very, uh, I, I think it is very easy to understand and clean. So you can really clearly see what is, what is going on, what is going to be deployed. Um, yeah. So now to some more interesting stuff. Um, of course I will abstract a lot of things because as I told you before, I cannot tell you everything about Terraform, but um, this is uh, this is one challenge that we had. Uh, we wanted to have different environments for dev, staging, and production, and also for all the other testing systems. But we did not want to have to repeat ourselves all the time because in Terraform, um, it it is uh, you have to have one configuration for one project, and if you want to reuse them, you have to use modules. So we, we created modules, um, as evidenced by the, uh, module keyword. Um, um, this right here is the module handling the Cloud Run application for a part of our website. 
Um, it can be configured using min scale and max scale and memory. So in this instance, we have uh, minimum instances of one. So one instance is always running. Uh, maximum instances of 10. So at most, if we have a lot of traffic, uh, we, we will scale up to at max uh, 10 pods. Uh, we use 2000 megabytes of RAM and uh, no uh, CPU throttling. But what is especially cool or what is the, the thing I want to tell you about is the, the config file location. Um, this is uh, our custom Mm. configuration. Uh, this is what we when we customly added to define within Terraform what config file will be used at runtime. So uh, this uh, prod in this instance means production environment, which means uh, this website next module will be started using uh, the production configuration. So the configuration lives alongside the actual uh, application code where it's where it makes sense for it to go, um, and we can have different configurations at the same time in the production code, and Terraform inserts uh, environment variable, which is uh, read on startup and decides which config is to be used. Um, so now you might ask yourselves, what's the big deal? Why weren't you able to do this before? And the answer to that, oops, the answer to that is secrets, uh, which brings me to the next slide, because uh, we can you can't really use uh, secrets really nearly in. So you need secrets in your configurations, obviously, because you need some uh, some API keys or some yeah whatever. You you need to use secrets in your configurations. Um, so of course you wouldn't be able to check them in. How we solved this before is that we had our configuration files directly on the servers and only on the servers, so they were never checked in anywhere, which led to the problems I mentioned before. Um, because so because we had secrets, we couldn't uh, version our files, and because we couldn't version our files, uh, the files were unversioned, and we had no idea what was going on at, at all the time. Um, so now we created a system where we have placeholders in our config files. As you can see, uh, it is a, a short, uh, a short cutout from a config file of ours. So we define our secrets for uh, with uh, with a placeholder, which is um, which is uh, read and replaced on startups with secrets from the Google Cloud Secret Manager. So on startup. The container decides, okay, which config am I going to use? Prod staging dev. Okay, it's prod. So it's, it reads the prod config and then it's, it's, uh, it passes the prod config. And every time it gets a secret, uh, double, po uh, colon with whatever a name, it searches for the secret in the secret manager. Um, and uh, if uh, if the Cloud Run service has the correct access rights, so this is also defined in Terraform, which uh, Cloud Run instance has which uh, access to which secrets, um, it will fill the secrets in, and the configuration is ready to go, and the, our application is able to use it. Um, so this uh, in basically this enables us to have all our secrets stored in the secret manager using minimal need to know principles for respective services, as well as having uh, different secrets for different stages. So prod can have another secret or another configuration, of course, than uh, staging or development. And this is how we define it in the in the service. Uh, we just define an environment variable um, and reference the secret so the secret key. Um, to insert it into the environment variable. So, uh, some other lessons uh, learned uh, along the way when working with Terraform. There are a few, a few gotchas, I, I'd have to say. First of all, parallel working in Terraform has its problems because uh, you have, uh, you always have the complete configuration if you want to, if, if two people want to work within the same project at the same time and want to try something out, uh, you always need to push your changes because if I'm going to add a service and a colleague of mine is going to add another service and I apply, then the service starts to exist. 
but if he hasn't uh, got my changes yet and also applies, uh, Terraform will try to delete my service because in his configuration files, uh, in his in his Terraform files, the my service doesn't exist. So this is something you have to find the workaround for. I mean, it's not it's not that big of a deal because Terraform is not something you always uh, permanently work on because it's uh, more uh, uh, it's it's kind of a bigger task when you change the infrastructure and you're not going to uh, change the infrastructure really nearly on any given day if you want to do that you can use test environments which is also especially easy now to set up for us because we have uh, we have the configurations for it um, and this also means there's no great way to work with branches. So if I switch a branch, uh, the infrastructure, uh, which has an entirely different infrastructure, the infrastructure would be completely revamped when I apply it, of course. Uh, and another thing is, but um, to prevent this, uh, Terraform has established a log file. So this means one, once you started the apply application process, so do you started apply, um, the state will be locked and others cannot, uh, cannot, uh, change something while you are already changing things. Um, another big gotcha is, uh, Terraform does not like renaming, uh, renaming, uh, resources. I learned this the hard way when I tried to rename, our, we, we, we just, uh, we, we started the project and I was like, yeah. Uh, we, we named the project, uh, the, our, our basic project something which was not optimal and I just wanted to rename it. Uh, I mean, yeah, easy, quick, uh, just rename it and ready to go. But it actually uh, de deletes the resources and recreates them once you rename them. So this was uh, a bit of a bummer. Uh, we were not in production yet, it was, it was only in testing, but it still was a bit of a, oh my god, what is going on moment. <laughs> Um, but, but there is a way out for this, which I didn't know at the time. You can use the move command and this, uh, lets you move resources without breaking them. Um, another small uh, issue is that some cutting edge features of the cloud might not be supported in Terraform. Um, we just ran into this problem one time where, uh, automatic compression code for backend buckets, uh, was not yet implemented, but there are also workarounds for that. So, um, all in all, I can say Terraform is a really great tool to use and I uh, recommend it if you want to uh, keep your infrastructure under control and want to uh, have a good experience developing uh, your infrastructure. So, all that's left to say is thank you for your attention. At least I hope you paid attention because I can see you, but um, I hope you learned something along the way and thank you.